Back from 2012 to 2014, Minecraft was the real deal. Everyone played it, everyone talked about it, and Minecon was unfortunately a thing. And it was a very awkward thing. Um, I was wondering, um, what's the recommended amount of dedicated WAM I should have to a server? Like, very awkward. But the point is, Minecraft was poppin'. Billions of hours were played, billions of blocks were placed, and everyone loved it, myself included. Around this time, I was in late middle school and early high school, and after a long day of sitting around and being awkward, I would come home and play some Minecraft with friends. But I wasn't a very big PC kid at the time, and I played primarily on Xbox 360. It was a lot of fun, and I spent hours and hours creating new things and building really ugly and disgusting garbage buildings on tons of different worlds. But times change, and I would end up moving on to other games and eventually other consoles. The friends that I played with moved on with life, and so did I. I started doing YouTube, some of my friends moved away, and others have gotten married and have even had kids. But while life and everything else has completely changed, these worlds that we spent so many hours on have been sitting there, completely untouched. Items are still exactly where we left them, and buildings are half-built, waiting for the day where someone logs on and finishes them. Minecraft is basically a time capsule of my childhood thoughts, ideas, and creations. So when I started up my Xbox 360 a few weeks ago to play Guitar Hero, and I saw it in my game library, I decided to go back and take a look. I pulled out my old capture card and hooked it up to record my gameplay just to see what it would be like. I wasn't expecting it to be like this, but it ended up feeling like a walk down memory lane. It was nostalgic and exciting to take a look at things that I remember from over five years ago. I somehow remembered where specific things were in the world, and I could even find my secret chest where I hid all of my diamonds from friends. Since I recorded everything, I figured that I would make this video to show you guys how cool of an experience it actually was. That experience is what you're going to be witnessing in today's video, where I revisit old Minecraft worlds and feel the nostalgia. Speaking of nostalgia, I have a super exciting announcement. I have officially launched my new line of apparel called Nostalgic. All of these shirts have designs that represent old pop culture, gaming, and nostalgic things that were popular back in the day. I've been working on this for quite a while now, and I've made sure that everything is the best possible quality. The current designs will only be up for a limited time, so if you're interested at all, now is the best time to get them. I really do appreciate all of the support lately, and none of this would be possible without all of my amazing viewers. So I just wanted to say thank you and let you know that I'm doing this, and I'll leave a link in the description below if you're interested. So I connected my Xbox to the internet for the first time in what felt like a decade, and I updated pretty much everything on it. It took forever with my garbage internet, but eventually I got Minecraft to start, and everything was good. And before I even hit play, I realized how much had changed with this game. To put this into perspective, the last time I played this game was when it was on Title Update 19, which was when they added the new tutorial world. Now as a comparison, the game is now on Title Update, like, 74. So, it's been a little while. I mean, there's like a billion new texture packs, there's somehow now mini games on the home screen, and everything just looks different. So I opened up my world list and realized how many worlds I actually made back in the day. I had a tendency to play on one for like a month and then get bored and decide to move on to a new one. So we're not gonna check out every single one of these, but we are gonna go talk about the most notable ones. So the first world that we visited has the beautiful name of Regular, cause I was very creative with naming my names, and it was actually one of the first survival worlds that I ever continued to play on. So I clicked play, and after waiting literally forever, I ended up spawning into the world. And I instantly realized, oh my god, I was bad at building. You want to see some good building skills? Well, look at my uh, glowstone floors, smooth stone walls, doors that don't even line up, and roofs that are only tall enough for people who are 3 foot 5. I'll admit, I wasn't the best at building, but this was probably when I enjoyed the game more than any other time. So to get a tour of this wonderfully hideous world, we have a couple main areas. First of all, there's my beautifully tall house, which was obviously the best house on the map. Then there was my friend Ryan's house, which was like, you know, slightly below mine, but nowhere near as cool. And then there was a main area connecting the two, with a couple of things attached to it. Now this world was nothing special, it wasn't something that we spent a ton of time on, but I would say that it was one of the first main worlds that I actually continued to play on. Back in the day, we thought this was the coolest thing ever made, and we were like, wow, look at our wonderful buildings, but Looking back, 
they're not that impressive. So I walked into my house with my lovely doors that for some reason didn't line up, and I was faced with the worst carpet I'd ever seen in my life. Out of all the possible Minecraft floor designs, I for some reason thought it would be a good idea to make a red carpet with teal next to it, with a path going to my beds and my ladder. It's 2019, we don't ask questions, but honestly we probably should. Looking around, I felt like something was missing. What was something that old Robocast, aka Losi Scopes, aka Cast Shadows would do? And then I realized I have to have a secret room. It's basically rule number one of playing Minecraft in 2013. So I looked towards the door and I saw those paintings. And they raised a red flag because everybody knows there's always a secret passageway behind paintings. So I finally found one, but I realized it was just an enchanting room, so nothing too promising. But I can guarantee there's definitely a hidden chest in here somewhere. Now where would 2013 me put the entrance to my secret room? My first guess was definitely under the ladder, but it wasn't there. So I figured, might as well check all the corners. First one, not so much. Maybe this one? Ah, there it is. I know me like the back of my own hand. So I walked into the secret room and realized that it was kind of depressing. I definitely duplicated obsidian because there was no way I had that much. And the other chests were pretty much empty for the most part. Now keep in mind, I did load up the world in creative, but this world was never put in creative. It was a survival world and I just loaded it up to get around easier. So I kept looking, but I never ended up finding my diamonds. So I figured there had to be another secret chest somewhere because your boy was always strapped with diamonds. Moving up to the second floor of the house, I had like a nice little kitchen area with way too many furnaces and a roof that you literally hit your head on. Honestly, my rating for this world is going down every second I look at my buildings. The third story wasn't much better where I still hit my head in the roof. It was pretty ugly and another thing I duplicated was gold. I could just see myself back in the day arguing with my friend Ryan and saying, no dude, I swear, it's not duplicated, but it definitely was. So I left this disaster of a house and walked out into the hallway towards Ryan's house. It was definitely a little bit better than mine, but for some reason the doors still didn't line up. I guess we just had a thing for non-lining up doors. Don't ask why. Now one thing I want to mention about Ryan is one, there was always cake in the world when Ryan was here. I, I don't mean that in the way you think. This man was obsessed with Minecraft cakes, like he did not consider himself successful until he had a Minecraft cake, so if he had one, that's how you know he played on the world quite often, and the number of cakes represented how much he played. Now you think I'm joking, but I promise you, that's how it worked. Honestly, his house wasn't that interesting either, but I just had to throw this world in the showcase because it was one of the first worlds that we ever played on. But like I said, this world wasn't really that impressive, so on my scale, I give it a 7 point zero. The only reason it's not a 0.0, .0 is because, you know, it was kind of the world that started everything. So again, that's why I put it in this video. Now this next world is pretty interesting. It's called Fort Losi, and it was made by me and Ryan. Now my Xbox gamer tag at the time was Losi Scopes with like 20 X's in it, and Ryan's was Losi Outdoors, and we were a clan of like three people. So, you know, back in the day, you always wanted to make your own clan. But anyways, we decided to build this world for a YouTuber showcase. I honestly don't remember his name, but there was this YouTuber that him and I both watched back in the day. I think it was like something wolf, can't remember. But uh, this guy did world showcases where he showed off like crazy Minecraft creations. So Ryan and I had the idea, well why don't we just build something crazy and then we could be YouTube famous. I'm still waiting on that moment. But anyways, we started spending a lot of time in this world, and we built what we called Fort Losi. To make a long story short, the guy ended up being a total douche, and he like cut me off and like never talked to me again and quit YouTube or something. I don't even know. Honestly, I don't really care, but he kind of did make me mad back in the day and made our work feel like it was for nothing. But now I'm making this video, so the world is technically now on YouTube. Look at that. Problem solving. Anyways, we built this giant fort entirely by hand. You see every single one of these blocks? They were all built by hand, by two people. I know, I know, we had no life, but honestly it's kind of cool to go back and look at it because there was a lot of work put into this. It definitely ups the standard a little bit from the previous world I showed you where I could barely build a walkway, and honestly, I was kind of proud of this. But the main attraction of this world is this giant thing called Fort Losi, which is this big wooden structure. Everything here was built by hand, and if you walk inside, there's like a, an armory and a potion place and a restaurant and a bunch of villagers to represent the army people. And honestly, we spent a lot of work on the inside of this because again, it was supposed to go on YouTube. I'd have to say my favorite part of this was the stairway that went up to the top. 
I spent a lot of time trying to make that look good, and I was so happy when it turned out like it did. Going up to the top, there's like some barracks and paintings over the door that I really don't understand the purpose of, but hey, again, don't ask questions. It also has like a little banner around the side, and there's like cannons washing out over the area, and honestly, I still feel like it's a pretty cool creation for like a 12 or 13 year old at the time. And the best part about this, we didn't forget our secret room. If you go around to the side, there's like a little door, which I actually couldn't find for a while, and that door takes you into this storage room. For some reason, even though it was a creative world, we loaded up every single chest with like every item imaginable. Maybe we were gonna try to lie and tell the YouTuber that we did it by hand in survival, but I mean, come on, it's pretty obvious that we didn't. Now don't ask any questions about Tommy. I don't know if it was a human that we drowned, or if it was a, a fish, or a squid, or a dog that we drowned, I don't know, okay? I really don't know, but for some reason he's not there anymore. He must have migrated, or died. So again, I, I don't know where Tommy went, I don't know what he was, but apparently we had a pet too. But this secret room was like the best one we made at the time, it had like a pool table, and I'm sure Ryan put some cakes somewhere because he always- yep, there they are. And I felt like it was a good addition to this giant fort, because what's a fort without a secret room? But that wasn't it, and there was actually quite a bit more to this world. You can follow the minecart path and go over to a hotel with like a really weird entrance and staircase that goes into a lobby. That hotel had an indoor pool and two rooms that weren't finished. I guess this was kind of like the thing we were working on when we switched to something else. But at the end of this world showcase, there's something that is probably the most influential building I have ever built in Minecraft. Oh Robo, what's so influential about a Minecraft bank? This was the bank that started everything, and I mean literally everything. I could go as far to say that this bank is the reason I am doing YouTube. Welcome to the bank, where you can trade in your gold ingots, diamonds, or gunpowder for sponge, which is our currency. And you can use your sponge to purchase houses and shop items. Now it sounds like a really simple concept, but I promise you, this bank, just like the previous world, went on to create everything. It gave me an idea, okay? The bank was one of the last things we built in this world, and I thought, why don't we make an entire world dedicated with an economy and houses and jobs and stuff like that? This bank was what gave me that idea. Overall, I rate this world a 8.97 out of 10. Now back to the bank story. And after this world was when I had the idea for the economy world. It was basically the future of what would become my unturned RP server, my Minecraft server that I had before that, and my entire RP series that basically started me out on YouTube. So again, kind of important. This world was called Town. And to be fair, I had like 20 other worlds with the name Town in it because this, this was an idea that was refined multiple times. But this was called Town and it was the start of the first ever Town world. And as I was revisiting all of these worlds, this is where the nostalgia and the memories really started getting to me. Welcome to the wonderful town of New Haven. I guess this is when I started playing Skyrim. The currency is gold nuggets. You get paid for doing jobs. So get out of your mom's basement and get a job. <laughs> and make sure you look for Easter eggs along the way. Go to the town hall and meet up with TLG TLGX scopes with a Z. So a little footnote here, TLG Scopes was also me. So I started out as a, I got a P99, don't ask questions. Then I changed my name to Losi Scopes, and then I changed my name to TLG Scopes. Now I don't know what TLG meant, but I guess that was my other attempt at making my own clan. And this is where the start of what I said in the intro starts to come into play. Everything was just left, exactly as it was, with nobody touching it, like it's waiting for somebody else. So when you first walk out of the town hall, you come across a couple of shops, and the first one was owned by a guy named Redneck Boy. Think about this. One day, me and Redneck Boy were just playing Minecraft, he had his little shop, I had my town, and one day we just got off and haven't talked to each other since. His items are still in his chest, and this world that was bustling with people at one point, trading and fighting and PvPing and buying stuff, is just silent. The streets are empty, and nobody's walking around trading, and shops are dead. Honestly, I kind of got in my feelings right around here, you know? I was kind of sad. It felt like a big part of my childhood was just, like, empty and desolate. But anyways, there were a couple of different shops. There was some shops for sale. Then, of course, there was my beautiful TLG scope shop where I had all my goods that I totally didn't bring in from creative mode. I had all my items in there just like I was planning to get back on and continue working. It's just crazy to me. 
Then you walk over to the back. There's like a little village where you can sell houses. Uh, nobody bought these houses, I don't think, because they were too expensive and everybody just stole stuff from each other. But there were pretty cool houses and we had the idea of selling them on the server. And then I came across these little mining lots that I guess people could purchase with gold to mine on. And one of the signs said Backhand Stew's Mining Lot. Backhand Stew is my friend Austin who I've known since third grade. And it's crazy to think that we used to just chill and play Minecraft together. And now he has a fiance. I did some more exploring, came across a hotel that literally... <laughs> that literally had one bed in a door that I charged money for. Why would you pay money to sleep in a bed? Like, there's no point. Not everybody's going to go to sleep. So you're literally paying money to sit in a two-by-two -two room with a bed in it. Like, come on, Robo, aka TLG Scopes. Come on, you can do better. There were a couple other shops, some enchanting rooms, the bank, and all types of other things. The bank was a pretty interesting thing to look at because going on from this to the next world to the next world you can tell how much it's improved. This bank was literally just a wooden building with doors and places to get your money at, but you'll see how it changes in the next one. And then on the other end was the jail, which was literally just a stone brick building with some little iron doors and bars for people to sit in. The way it worked was that if you broke one of the rules or you stole something, you got put in jail. And then finally, on the far side outside of the town, there were two houses. And before I even flew over to these, I realized exactly what they were. These were going to be the governor's mansions that me and my friend Ryan were going to build. I pretty much finished mine and he was in the middle of working on his when we just suddenly stopped playing on this world and moved on to a new one. At this point, my building skills have gotten a little bit better, but again, nothing too crazy. I mean, I don't even have doors on my house. Then I flew over to Ryan's house and I realized, like I said, he just suddenly stopped working on it. One day he just decided, hey, we're going to go on a new world and I'm going I'm to leave my doors backwards for some reason and not fix them and it just happened. Overall, I would give this world... Okay, my scale is getting a little confusing because I don't really know what I'm basing it off of, but uh, overall, I would give this world a uh, uh, 8.64. We got two more worlds, guys. Two more worlds, and I'll explain how this all connects at the end. The next world is another town world, but this time on our timeline, my name is now Cast Shadows. Cast Shadows? The first part of that name sure does sound pretty familiar. Boom, story time. You see this ugly skin? Yeah, I thought it looked like a robot, right? This is when I first got my capture card, and I figured, hey, I have this skin that looks like a robot, and my name is Cast XX Shadows, so let's combine Robo and Cast and make my YouTube name RoboCast, and then we'll make Minecraft videos on Xbox. It was a genius idea, and that's the actual story of how I got my YouTube name. Anyways, this town world was a little bit more improved than other ones. The other ones were kind of just like, oh, you get money from mining and then you can use it to buy stuff. But this one, there were actual jobs. You can kind of see how the rules and regulations started to kind of form world to world. The first world was an idea. That was the Fort Losi. The second world was kind of like an idea turned into a concept. Oh, let's make an economy. And the third world is the actual foundation of that economy. How are we going to make money? By making jobs. We have the guard who kills mobs and catches animals. We have the farmer who owns the farmer's market. He farms and sells stuff, obviously, that's what a farmer does. We have the handyman. We have the enchanter. We have the blacksmith and smelter. And that was pretty much it. And then we had me, the dictator. The guy who literally made all the rules. But yeah, that was the job sign. And the whole concept of this server, like I said, was pretty similar to the other ones. We had shops, like my clanmate. His name was Javid. Cast XX Killa. You know, great, great names. Basically, like, the number of X's you have is the amount of clout you had. So honestly, we all could have used some more X's. But the difference with this world is that there wasn't really, like, a set building theme. We kind of just experimented to see what would look the best. And somehow the bank was even a downgrade from the previous one. But again, trial and error, we'll figure it out. There was a town mine, which really doesn't make much sense because everybody would be mining in the same area, which means all the resources would be gone. And then we came across the Shop of Awesomeness, again, owned by me, Mr. Cast XX Shadows. This was kind of like my general store type thing. I had a farm to the side, and it's pretty much where I sold all of my items. The fact that people didn't just come in and, like, mine through walls and steal stuff honestly amazes me. I don't know why they didn't, because today, if you had any sort of world like this, that would probably be the first thing that happens. But like I said, this world was pretty much taking the ideas from the previous world and trying to implement them into a way that was organized, even though I feel like it was less organized than the previous one. 
Overall, the idea was progressing, but this world is nowhere as good as the last one, and I give it a 7.4. I feel like I said 7.4 for the first world, but it's just a number that comes to mind. So it's been a long video so far, but all of this rambling isn't for nothing. Yeah, there, there's a purpose to all of this, right? So all of these worlds lead into the next one, which then leads me to this last world, okay? This is the full town that we had always tried to make perfected. In this town, everything had a theme. We had a bank that was surrounded by bedrock. We had a battle arena. We had a job board. We had houses and shops and all types of exploration and Sparta pits that you could kick people into. We had a working jail. We had farms. We had everything. This world was the manifestation of all of our ideas from the start of that very first world. This world was probably the world that I spent the most amount of time on, of any of them. Everything went so smoothly, and I'm not going to go around touring everything because, again, it's pretty much the same thing, just reskinned and a lot nicer and more organized, but it feels the same. It feels like a world that was just left behind by everybody who was in it, and it's just sitting there ever since. But there is one thing that I have to mention. Remember how I was searching for those secret rooms in the first two worlds? Oh, this world? The secret room was on a whole new level. When Bill Gates wants to design his secret room, he's probably going to come to me after this video because this was the best secret room ever, okay? So if you go out from the town a little ways, there's this like very obvious mountain with jungle trees on top of it. You know, it doesn't give away anything. And uh, if you fly over there, there's a lever in the side of the mountain. This lever opens up a trap door, which goes into the bunker. Now, in the bunker, you can walk straight to that door and get through. Or can you? If you step on the bottom set of pressure plates, TNT falls out from underneath you and you fall into your death. But, there's a secret lever in this secret bunker that opens another secret passage. This secret passage leads you into another secret section, which had its own secret section. Seriously, we had a secret room within a secret room within a secret room. And you know what Ryan's addition was to this world? Of course, a secret trash can. That is the most Ryan thing I've ever heard in my life, because we all know, like I said, Ryan loves trash cans. In the back of our secret room within a secret room within a secret room was a secret lever. And you know what that lever opened? Another secret room. If you drop down into the pool of water, you get into the bottom of the secret room sections, I guess you could say. This was the secret man cave, and it was complete with a lot of cakes, refrigerators, and even another trash can. We had the man cave fridge and a computer that could only be used for man stuff, winky face. Not gonna lie, I probably didn't even know what that meant at the time, but Ryan, you were corrupting my young mind. You may think we're done, but oh no, we're just getting started. You see that painting right there? You wanna know what's in that painting right there? Oh, you guessed it. A secret lever. You know what that secret lever does? It unlocks another secret lever. And you know what that secret lever does? It unlocks the door to the secret room. It's been a front the whole time. This is the real secret room. Even though there's nothing in it. We literally built a secret room for no reason. But yeah, this is what you call high-tech security, and the chance that somebody would manage to get in, not fall in the TNT, and find all of these levers was like basically zero. This was the real deal, my friend. But other than this, there wasn't that much different in this world from the previous ones, except, like I said, the fact that it was more organized, had some structure, and looked better. But this would only be the start of what would become of our ideas. It's really cool to look back and see ideas and what they've turned into, and this idea turned into something bigger than I could ever imagine. After this is when I branched out to Minecraft, and I opened up a server that was a townie server, because I liked the idea of towns apparently, and this townie server was called Minsonomia Townie. I don't know where I got the name from, but it was something I was going for like a medieval type thing, I guess. But it was a town server with jobs and ranks and all types of crazy stuff, and it is actually what made me my first bit of income on my own. I set up donations on this server, and it kind of made me like, it wasn't a ton of money, but at the time, it felt like a large amount of money. It was probably like 150 bucks total, but still. Like, I actually made money from playing Minecraft. This is around the time when I rebuilt my server and started making videos on it, and I made a Let's Play of my townie server. This Let's Play was the first series I'd ever posted on YouTube, and it led on to what would become my channel right now. From this point, I used the money that I made with the server to upgrade my PC, which I then started playing Unturned on. I think you guys are seeing how this is connecting now, and why this is such a big deal for me to go back over. Me playing Unturned would lead to me opening a server, which would eventually lead to me getting my first 100,000 subscribers from playing on that server. 
It's honestly pretty crazy to think about all this because building one bank in a world that was supposed to get me on YouTube and didn't allowed me to start this entire thing that I'm doing now. I would honestly have to say that that bank is the reason why I'm on YouTube today. Because if the bank didn't lead to all these town servers, I would have never had the idea for Mincinomia, I would have never had the idea to start YouTube on it, make the money to upgrade my computer, and then move on to Unturned, and there's no telling what I'd be doing today. Now this video is definitely much different from what I usually make, but I think I got the point across pretty well. The entire purpose of this video was to show that while everything changes, video games are still there for you. They will always be there for you, and they will always be a way to pass the time. And if you really enjoy something, you never know what it could lead on to. I enjoyed building these worlds, and now I'm making YouTube videos for a living, which is something I would have never dreamed of before. But I hope you guys enjoyed this type of video, and while it was a little bit different, let me know in the comments if you would like to see something else like this. Anyways guys, that is going to be it, so I hope you enjoyed, I will see you guys next time, and peace.